of your screen with the team Excadrill, Tyranitar, Rotom Heath, Gastrodon, Togekiss, and Hitmontop. Uh, and then Kyle Livinghouse is on the right of your screen with the team of Rotom Wash, Whimsicott, Melodic, Duraludon, Conkelder, and Arcanine. So uh, Kyle with the double water types here, which is exactly what a Gastrodon wants to see. Yeah, the Gastrodon here is going to be, I don't want to say an issue, but if he, he has limited options on ways to cover that and, and effectively knock it out, you know, Whimsicott might be one. We, I think you have to play the game to see if it has a grass type attack in something you know that can easily deal with this gastrodon but if not kyle's choice i think at team preview is going to be a little bit limited yeah and if you look at it you know rotomosh and mylotic are going to get absolutely eaten for breakfast by this gastrodon yeah, and the other big threats from James's team being his Sand Core and Tyranitar and Extra Drill. Uh, something that would be good against both of them is Rotom, Rotom Wash. We have seen many Rotom Washes actually be a lot more offensive in VGC 2020 compared to previous formats uh, with that new access to Nasty Plot for all the Rotom forms. So uh, Rotom can increase his special attack by two stage and then go for uh, Nasty Plot boosted Hydro Pumps, which would obviously... Uh, Tyranitar and Extra don't want to take, but that's why the Gastron is filled on this slot for James. Yeah, I mean, it does so much work, and, and Storm Drain is probably one of the most frustrating abilities to play against uh, in a long time. Of course, game is coming up, and uh, we see the leads already. Uh, well, there it is. There it is. There's Gastrodon. Yeah, James is not messing around. He sees his opponent as two water types on his team preview, and he leads Gastrodon and Rotom Heat. Uh, and Kyle on the top of your screen with Arcanine and Whimsicott is his lead. So uh, I'd say a lot more traditional of a lead out of Kyle here. There's many avenues that this Whimsicott and Arcanine can go for. Yeah, well, we'll see exactly what this Arcanine uh, is carrying. We did talk about it uh, earlier, obviously moving away from Justified some of the time and, and being a little more supportive. One of its most popular supportive moves in Snarl would be great here. Rotom and Gastrodon, both special attackers, don't really appreciate taking uh, a Snarl and, and their damage output being severely limited from that point on. Yeah, the Arcanine, it's a Pokemon that can run physical, you can run special, you can run mixed, and those Snarl is uh, great because it hits both of your opponent's Pokemon. This Moonblast, though, from Whimsicott will go into the uh, Gastron here, bringing it down uh, to about half of its HP, thanks to a critical hit Snarl uh, from Arcanine. So both of James's Pokemon will have their special attacks lowered by one stage, and a Volt Switch from Rotom Heat into the Whimsicott will break a potential Focus Sash that the Whimsicott would be holding, and James is going to have to switch out into something in the back. Uh, probably one of his Pokemon he would like to Dynamax in this set. Yep. And that's the Togekiss. Togekiss is a great uh, great selection here. Uh, and I think the Gastrodon's yeah, going to struggle a little bit to deal the uh, amount of damage you'd like it to. Earth Power into Arcanine. Still mm -hmm. does over 50% uh, uh, to the Arcanine, which is interesting since there was had its special attack lowered and there was no critical hit there. That Arcanine might not have a lot of special defense investment if it took that much from Earth Power. No, I mean, that's a good amount of damage to get down, but this Togekiss in a great position. Uh, one thing I think is very key here is the Whimsicott kind of admits that it doesn't have a Grass-type move. You'd go after the Gastrodon with it, unless he was predicting a switch out and, and didn't want to just throw out a Grass move into something that would take it comfortably then, you know, showing Moonblast could reveal, hey, I, I actually don't have the best answer, and that's why he's just kind of going after it. Uh, the Whimsicott, though, back to what it usually gets up to right now. Tailwind on turn two for Kyle. That's going to boost, or that's going to double the speed of all of its Pokemon on his side of the field for four turns. Arcanine just going to keep up with the Snarls here. It does connect onto both of James's Pokemon. Of course, that's something we have to look out for. Since Snarl is 95% accurate, it does miss sometimes. This Air Slash, though, will definitely be enough to knock out Whimsicott, even through the Snarl uh, decrease there. Uh, so now Kyle's going to have to bring something else into that slot, and Gastrodon will recover on this turn, going up to uh, pretty close to full HP. Yeah, I mean, uh, James taking the first knockout, but I think the biggest issue here is both his Pokemon are going to be uh, affected quite, quite poorly by this Snarl. So uh, if... You know, Kyle can sit there and just keep on going with Snarls. Gastrodon and Togekiss are very manageable at that point. And this Duraludon switching in for Kyle here, you would assume, uh, obviously, it's a Pokemon that likes to Dynamax a lot since it gets access to moves like uh, Thunder and Solar Beam that wouldn't be effective if it's not Dynamax. So when you turn those into the Dynamax moves, they are uh, a lot more effective. So you can expect uh, potentially this Duraludon to go for a, a Dynamax here. And this Togekiss, that is not what he wants to see, uh, is a, a Steel type that would be pretty strong against it. Yeah, a Steel type that really enjoys going after those Togekiss. We might get a bit of information on the item it's carrying there as well. That could be important to see. But we've actually gone you know, a good number of turns, two turns in this game already, with no Dynamax. Uh, both players just kind of feeling it out, trying to spread around some moves. 
and uh, see exactly how they play. No more snarls going on for the rest of this game, though. No, but you will see more intimidates when the Arcanine mm -hmm. comes back eventually. Conkelder, though, is the reveal as Kyle's fourth Pokemon he brought in this matchup. No switches from James's end, though, so uh, I wonder if he's actually keeping this Togekiss in and potentially using it as a Dynamax or saving one of the Pokemon in the back for uh, for later. This will be the Dynamax Duraludon, though, for Kyle, uh, getting that in that HP increase, doubling his HP, because it looks like he leveled him up with his Dynamax candies properly. So uh, that's the first battle you always have to win when you're when you're yeah. building. Make sure you build it effectively. And James is going to match his Dynamax with the uh, Togekiss. Yeah, I think that's a that's a wise decision. Is making sure your Togekiss can take something like a big hit. It, I mean, it has been snarled, uh, so it's not at full offensive power, but it's still in a good position. And we'll see exactly how this Togekiss deals with the threat of the Duraludon. Gastron keeping it real safe though. Yeah, Gastrodon will protect on this turn, though, so no damage. And uh, uh, if it was hit by an attack like a Max Overgrowth, uh, that would be through the Protect. So this Max Overgrowth is only doing 25% of the damage that it would have if Gastrodon didn't protect. So that is a nice turn from James protecting his Gastrodon here. Uh, and now the Togekiss can go, try to go for an attack into Duraludon to bring that down pretty low. Here is the Max Star Starfall, though. And thanks to that uh, in combination, it looks like... He might be holding uh, uh, an item there that helps him take special attacks better, uh, but also because of the Snarl earlier, that Starfall does not do enough. No, I mean, the Snarl, Duralidon being Duralidon and, and being able to carry items that really help, that Togekiss is not as big a threat. I mean, on the positive, he changed the terrain back, so he's not getting any recovery on that side from the grassy terrain. Yeah, but uh, that's, that's a big reveal th that he does have, he does have the, the grass attack that it looks like Whimsicott might have been lacking. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be somewhere on the team, right? Otherwise, you just take big losses to Gastrodon, and this Rotom switch back in. Really smart play to, to deal with that, but Duraludon's not trying the same thing again, and uh, this Togekiss could be in a bit of danger. Max Steel Spike into Togekiss will bring it down to under 50% of its HP, going to increase the Duraludon and Conkelder's defense by one stage, but they are oh. facing off against two special attackers, so that won't matter. Uh, the What will matter, though, is this activation from Weakness Policy on Togekiss, increasing both his attack Attack, special attack by uh, two stages it barely hangs on with two hp from that ice punch from conkelder and here's a max airstream for your troubles one hit knockout into the conkelder uh and now james's pokemon have those speed boosts togekiss is faster than duraludon he can try to go for uh go for another attack that was a huge uh survival from togekiss to live on two yeah, this Togekiss clinging on now with its weakness policy activated, I think, you know, it's going to be in a, a pretty good position uh, to try and deal with uh, the rest of the game. This There's a lot of work that needs to be done from the two Pokemon on, on Kyle's side of the field, and they're both taking a good amount of damage. Of course, Togekiss dangerously low, but being able to pick up a knockout and, of course, get the Airstream boost puts it in a great position. And Kyle is down to his two last Pokemon, and we actually haven't even had James reveal his fourth Pokemon in this matchup yet. We've only seen these three, so obviously he's in a four to two lead with his Pokemon uh, with, uh, with the weakness policy boost still looking in a strong position. Of course, Rotom Heat now being faster because of that max airstream. He'll be faster than the Arcanine. He can get a fully, uh, fully strong Thunderbolt potentially into that Arcanine slot without getting snarled. And as I say it, he's actually gonna switch out instead into the Gastrodon. Doesn't need your help, Joe. He knows what he's doing. Togekiss <laughs> is gonna max guard. Uh, doesn't want to get caught by anything on this turn. Uh, so the Snarl's not going to get there. And uh, whatever follows up, probably not going to do the same. Because the Snarl... It does connect on Gastron, though, which could be critical. You know, lowering yeah. a special attack by one stage. And Max Wormwind, though, from Duraludon on this final turn of Dynamax for it will take down the Gastrodon. I think James, uh, with a critical hit, I don't think he really needed it in that situation. Uh, he will he will be able to take that Gastrodon down. I think uh, James understood Gastrodon's utility was not as effective in this match since Kyle's two Pokemon he didn't bring were his two water types. Yeah, and he also stalled out the Tailwind there, which I think is really important. Uh, that Tailwind, you know, set up much earlier in the game. Kind of easy to forget about it, but, you know, Kyle, had the advantage in speed and was still losing Pokemon through that. James has been switching so well. He does reveal his fourth Pokemon in Excadrill, uh, but I, I think, you know, there is a lot of work to do here. Uh, the Arcanine obviously wouldn't be the worst thing to try and deal with it, but Excadrill is going to be able to deal a lot of damage back. Next to Togekiss as well, there's nothing to stop you pressing Earthquake. Right, that's some of the, the great synergy that this team would provide. Extra drill, obviously, Rotom Heat having Levitate, um, the Togekiss being immune as a flying type. There's Those are teammates that would love to sit next to Extra Drill as he decides to Earthquake 
all day. And Duraldon and Arcanine are two Pokemon weak to Earthquake from, from this extra drill. So uh, it's definitely not an ideal situation for Kyle. Earthquake will go into the Protect, though, from Arcanine. Uh, this will hit Duraldon super effectively, though. Is it enough for a one-hit knockout? It is not that Duraldon is able to barely hang on just a little bit. And Flash Cannon from uh, Duraldon will take down Togekiss in those last couple of hit points it had remaining in this matchup. It's now two Pokemon to two uh, with the Arcanine Duraldon versus Rotom Heat and X. Drill. I think honestly the back two for James this, this pairing is so much to handle uh, of course James has to be a little bit cautious with his Rotom uh, we do see a lot of Rotoms carrying those choice items uh, so if he does pick a move to, to try and you know tidy up the rest of this game uh, he could be in a good position but we, it'd be interesting to see exactly what he has Arcanine is moving first uh, Flare Blitz could cause some issues is with this Sash? extra drill. It's not, it's not. The extra drill actually is is knocked out here from that Flare Blitz. So uh, that that Arcanine reveals to be physical and special with Flare Blitz and Snarl. Ooh. And perfectly using Flare Blitz recoil there uh, because that will activate his Figgy Berry, recovering 33%. Uh, but this discharge will actually target both of Kyle's Pokemon here, knocking out the Duraldon and bringing Arcanine down low enough for that the next turn it will knock it out. So having that spread attack... Uh, uh, that's great synergy with extra drill again, right? Mm -hmm. As a as a ground type, that that discharge, there was no there was no loss to using it on that turn. Yep. There was no downside. No, and I think this is a really big thing for James to reveal. I, I mean, it's he has to reveal it in game one, obviously. But you know, as we saw, he positioned his team so well to say, "Hey, I have extra drill, rotate some heat in the back." You know, I'll lead Togekiss Gastrodon and, and play around with that a little bit, see what we want to do. You know, he got a lot of turns out of that pairing alone, and and being able to set up for this. Discharge and Earthquake combo, which has been around for oh, 12 years now, something yeah. <laughs> something crazy, like 11 or 12 years, where, where Discharge and Earthquake has worked well together. You know, that that's huge, and particularly when your last two are both weak to Earthquake and, and not the easiest to deal with, something like a Discharge. Of course, Duraludon was already very, very low from the Earthquake the previous turn, but James, managing the board state there really smartly, thinking forward and thinking about the next couple of turns always to say, you know what? I think we're gonna we're gonna put ourselves in a winning position at the end of the game. And you wonder what adjustments Kyle can make here in game two because the two Pokemon he had in the back are water types, which are weak to a discharge from the Rotom Heat. So uh, you you wonder if he wants to bring one of those Pokemon when it's one already weak to Gastronon or hurting against Gastronon, and two can potentially be uh, be hit very strongly from a discharge from Rotom Heat. Yeah, I mean I think if you're gonna bring one, you have to bring Rotom Wash arguably to to be a little to better against the, the discharge right. and avoid the earthquake. But then you have to play the Rotom Wash very carefully around the Gastron. You want to be firing off Hydro Pumps. That's why you bring Rotom Wash. You can, but that's uh, why you bring Duraludon to get rid of the Gastron so your Rotom Wash can, can take care of everything else. Yeah, I mean, we we're talking about things that revealed. Obviously, Discharge Earthquake was revealed by James in game one, but Kyle had to reveal that his grass type move lives on Duraludon. Right. And that's something that he's going to have to say, hey, I, if he knows about it, Duraludon can be targeted by a couple different options to try and get rid of it. And that's something he's going to have to be careful about. Right, this Duraludon obviously is so key. One, because he's his Dynamax user for uh, for for Kyle there. So he, obviously it's one of his important Pokemon that he brings into the matchup. But two, if that Duraludon goes down or is not nowhere to be found against the Gastronon, it doesn't seem like Kyle has any ways of hitting Gastronon super effectively. And that's really what a strategy um, that James's team strives off of is people who are just forced to ignore the Gastronon long enough for it to uh, do enough to bring everything down low enough for one of his sweepers like Extra Drill or, or Rotom Heat to take care of the rest. Yeah, I mean, I think bringing that pair in the back is probably James's win condition again here. Uh, regardless of what changes Kyle makes to his team selection, he has to be thoughtful about that. Try and catch Rotom Heat. We saw it switch in a couple times, you know, and show itself early. And I think dealing with that when you see it and you're given that opportunity is probably more important than, than we, we give it credit for. And now Kyle has the information that James's Togekiss is weakness policy and not Babiri Berry. So if he's able to try to get a double target off into that situation he knows the combination of max steel spike and say another attack would be able to take it down <laughs> not ice no, punch ice yeah, punch was not enough uh, uh, apparently not that ice but I, I do wonder if it was close enough uh you know potentially for kyle to try it again in, in game two maybe it just didn't uh didn't roll in his favor in that in game one um but the Conkelder is uh, is an is an interesting bring in the matchup because it's so weak to Togekiss with both of its fairy and flying attacks. But you really like Conkelder against Extra Drill and Tyranitar. Like, how can you not bring that against a Sandcore? It's hard to justify leaving uh, Conkelder at home in this matchup. But as you said, I mean, it, it yeah, the weakness policy was in play. It, it got felled very very quickly by the Max Airstream, which is unsurprising. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not like a Pokemon like Conkelder is known for taking Max Airstreams very very well. 
but you know i think it's something that you have to think about I, I, we also need to look at the fact that Kyle had tailwind up in that game. Right. He should have been in the driving seat, I think, and really uh, and controlling the game uh, a little bit differently there, but just not able to take the full advantage of all those turns. Yeah, usually when you do have tailwind up, you are able to uh, to be able to use it effectively, or that's at least the that's the idea behind it, is you now for the next few turns have the speed advantage. But uh, with Dynamax, it's such a it's such a big factor when you double HP of a Pokemon who's already so bulky in Togekiss that uh, you're not able to take advantage of it or use your tailwind turns efficiently enough against it. So uh, James was able to stall out the tailwind until his extra drill ended up being uh, and Rotom Heat were ended up faster than Kyle's Pokemon. Yeah, well, players, back around for game two. The teams obviously haven't changed. And, you know, I, I like James' selection. Honestly, I, I think James brought the perfect Pokemon. I think he respected the, the sand option very, very wisely. And, and I think Kyle did the same and said, you know what? I do have to bring Conkeldor. I do have to bring Duraludon. Um, Arcanine was a smart one. And I think the opening turns, you know, if James didn't start switching, the Snarl would have been a huge issue. But James played it smart. He said, you know what? I'm not going to let you Snarl me all the way down to no special attack. I'm going to switch. And he got away with the switches. There was no no switch that he got really hard punished for and, and got caught with like a double target on the way in. So he put himself in a great position. And, and switching this year, it's been a little different with obviously Dynamax. You try not to switch it out. It does happen. Right. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that switching has opened up a lot of doors for James in that game. And... and causing those problems the threat of something like gastroton in the back is always something that your opponent has to think about i'd like to see more of an aggressive uh lead here or turn one out of kyle in this matchup because uh two of his four tailwind turns were wasted where the only attack was a snarl from arcanine which is you know uh, obviously not a, a high damaging attack there so something that actually lets him be an advantage on turn one more in this situation would uh, would be beneficial but we are going to have the same leads as we did in game one with arcanine whimsicott for kyle and gastrodon rotom heat for james yeah i mean there's a, another option here we talk about team synergy on james's side rotom next to gastrodon can, can discharge as well there's no issue there uh and maybe that's, that's something he's gonna go for i mean the rotom uh, did Volt switch out, which I liked. It got some good damage down on this uh, Whimsicott. But Whimsicott's forced into a Protect here, a move we don't often see on it. Right, Whimsicott holding that Protect there, meaning it had to give up something else uh, that it would like to have in that slot instead. <laughs> probably the but Grass-type move. Probably, <laughs> you, would, you would assume that's where the grass, that Grass move turned into Protect. Uh, Snarl, though, will connect onto both of James' Pokemon, just as it did in Game 1. But this time around, James does not fall for the protect bait from from uh, from Whimsicott and we'll switch out in to Togekiss in the back. All that's left on this turn is a potential Earth Power or Scald from Gastrodon. Gastrodon opts for Scald here, still hitting Arcanine super effectively, bringing it down, but that is low enough for it to activate its Figgy Berry, so he will re recover a little bit here. Yeah, getting that berry out of the way early though is, is pretty good. I mean, James again took, yeah, he took the drop to special attack on his Gastrodon, but really, you know, not too worried about the situation. You know, he's managed to get some good damage down, deal with Arcanine's Barry. It doesn't have a way to get that back. So it's stuck with that amount of health for the rest of the game. And not falling for that Protect on Whimsicott is so smart. Realizing that, hey, Arcanine actually caused a lot of problems with its Snarls. And just going after it turn one, I think, is really smart uh, adaptation from James. No Dynamax here from the Togekiss, though. I was possibly expecting it to Dynamax, but instead it will have to eat this critical hit Snarl, which still does pitiful damage to it. Uh, <laughs> so that's how uh, that's a dark move on to fairy, fairy, fairy Pokemon for you. Air Slash, though, from Togekiss into Whimsicott will bring it down uh, pretty low. Not enough for a knockout, though. And this Skull from Gastrodon will be enough to take the Arcanine out. It does not look like it brings him down to pretty much where he was at before the the figgy berry the previous turn yeah and this is james uh something that he, he kind of did in the previous game just taking the snarls and getting the knockouts right so if he could get let's say a double knockout in this turn you know air slash and scold would probably still get there then he's just up in pokemon and he can switch around so easily and say okay well you've got the snarls down that's cute but now i'm just gonna switch around play play through them and then depending on what the last pokemon in the back are as well for for kyle you know he may just say all right well i'll just buy time with these and do chip damage while i can uh, he is going to be playing in a Tailwind again, so Kyle really wants to get something like that Duraludon in it as soon as possible, I think, uh, and go from there. But these two, 
really not putting the pressure on from Kyle's side of the field, and James uh, probably feeling pretty good about it. We're going to see a, a switch out, actually, from Arcanine in, I believe, the same exact moment that it switched out the last game into Duraludon. So Kyle is is using the same strategy here, but there is an adjustment from this Whimsicott before it presumably gets knocked out from this dazzling gleam here uh, as it does take it out there. Uh, fake tears will lower the Togekiss's special defense by two stages. So that way next turn, when this Duraludon tries to go for a Dynamax, oh, and actually Ooh. gets the burn there. Uh, it won't affect its attacks. It's just a, a, uh, a special attacker, but it will take that residual damage every turn. Now this Togekiss is minus two on a special defense and a, uh, a max steel spike would take it down. Yeah, a max steel spike from uh, based off flash cannon, obviously a special attack would definitely get it there. And that is forcing uh, this this pairing actually forces a lot of pressure from James. So he's obviously got loaded special defense and special attack on Togekiss. He's got lowered special attack by a number of stages on Gastrodon. So he may be forced to switch and based on how he played game one, he's already revealed Rotom again. So no reason not to expect Excadrill. If Kyle could capitalize on, on switches, he could get himself back in the driving seat really, really quickly. That said, this Togekiss has to leave uh, because it's not even going to get the chance to activate its weakness policy in, in its current situation. Yeah, this uh, Conkelder is sitting here waiting, waiting in the wind for Excadrill to show up from James, which is what he expects for it to be that fourth and final Pokemon. Uh, but the, it's actually an adjustment here for the Gastron switching into Hitmontop. So it looks like Exedra was left in the uh, left in the box in this game too. This Intimidate will affect the uh, the Conkelder though as he lowers his attack by one stage. Uh, and a Dynamax from the Duraludon here will uh, make it pretty strong and a potential Max Steel Spike into Togekiss would take it down. Yeah, and I think maybe James here banking on the fact he's assuming that, hey, He's not, no, he's not going to think I'm going to leave the, the Togekiss in. And just going from that point and saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm actually going to leave the Togekiss in and I'm going to Dynamax it too. Uh, I, and I'm going to try and get some value out of it before before it goes down. I don't think it's going to be as valuable as last time with the weakness policy activating. Uh, but maybe he's just trying to read into Kyle and saying, hey, I don't believe you're going to actually target this Togekiss. So uh, Drowdon typically can be trained faster than Togekiss, and he has Tailwind on his side. So we, Ooh. Would, we would assume the we would assume Drowdon goes faster, but He's Max, for it. Max Wormwind into this Togekiss slot. This Togekiss will not be punished as he expected. Kyle expected a switch out here, and instead he's going to have to take a Max Starfall into that slot. I was I was really worried for James that he was going to he was going to use this Dynamax and get knocked out before it even got an attack off, but he just Dynamax to free and acted like nothing happened. Hook, line, and sinker. He's got him there. I mean, he's he's called it and said, uh, uh, Kyle, I don't think you're going to bank on my Togekiss still being there. He's, I mean, Kyle has made a hard decision there to say, I'm going to go after Max Wellman, probably thinking about the extra drill, trying to lower its attack on the way in, you know, or something coming in like the Rotom, you know, Rotom in that slot, extra drill in the other slot. So hey, you get a lot of damage down on Rotom, you get the, the lower health on, on extra drill. But James, yeah, the damage isn't as much as you like because of those previous snarls, but really smart. Max Guard gonna keep it safe and a lot of pressure right now on this Hitmontop. Steel Spike will Ooh. go into that Max Guard here uh, and a Drain Punch from Conkeldar into Hitmontop does a, a good amount of damage yeah. to the Hitmontop. Not enough to bring it down into the yellow, but close combat from Hitmontop will take down Duraldon with a critical hit. I really don't think that crit was needed. It was just more, uh, you know, more salt in the wound in this situation as Duraldon for two turns used a uh, an immunity attack in Max Wormwind and then attacked into Max Guard. And that was perfectly played by James that this Tailwind will well, peter out. There's another thing I want to talk about in this team, and it's an interesting lineup. So we talked in game one about the item on Duraldon, and Duraldon's are very commonly carrying Assault Vest. We saw the damage it's been taking. It's been so limited. Clearly, that's carrying the Assault Vest. So let's look at the other Pokemon on Kyle's team in Conkelda. Now Conkelda likes Assault Vest, it's certainly one of the top options on Conkelda, but its second option, after grinding all the time and, and hoping that he gives it to you, Ball Guy can give you Flame Orb, and Flame Orb goes on Conkelda. So we roll it back a turn and we say, hey look, Togekiss stayed in and it used Max Starfall, which set Misty Terrain up. So this Conkelda isn't able to get the full benefit of its item. And, and, and there, Kyle... there is the forfeit, though, from Kyle. So James is going to win that set.